Happy Tutorial Tuesday and welcome to Melinden TV. This is just a follow-up bonus video on the video that you saw last Wednesday, which was a new episode of Muscles and Makeup. I did a Deck of Scarlet Mystery Box unboxing and a bunch of body weight workouts with my workout deck of cards. If you haven't seen that video already, I will link it up here somewhere. Um, and then at the end of that video, you saw this look, and today you're going to get to see me create it. I'm using all of the Deck of Scarlet products that I got in that mystery box, not those specifically, just my own version. I have duplicates. Um, I have my own personal ones, and then I have the ones that I got in my mystery box that I'm using for a giveaway. It's a lot of products. There's four full face palettes and then a whole bunch of other items, but this is the look that I created with it. Have my little side shave. Um, by the time this video posts, that'll probably be gone, but when else was I going to have an opportunity to like be experimental with my hair? I'm in quarantine. Well, while I'm filming this and, and no one's going to see it. And by the time this video goes up, this will all be grown out. So I thought it'd be fun. You've actually already seen this look before. Um, a couple of months ago, I did a quarantine bar crawl and this was my makeup in it. And that's because after I'm done filming this, I'm about to go drink a lot. So if you haven't seen that video, I'm going to link that one up here as well. Um, this is a tutorial, but it's more like a three-torial because I realize that not everyone of my followers is interested in makeup and interested in makeup tutorials. And um, at this point in my channel's um, in my channel's history, I don't have high quality uh, lights and cameras and sound to provide a really high quality tutorial. So I kind of want to make up for that in other ways by adding to my tutorial, making it a three-torial. And I'm going to have some fitness FAQs um, that I just pulled off of one of the Facebook groups that I'm a part of. In this Facebook group in particular, there's a lot of women who are interested in fitness, but very new to it. So sometimes I ask questions that I feel would be very, very helpful for someone who's a little bit more experienced to give an answer to. And keep in mind that I'm not a certified trainer or coach. I'm not a nutritionist or dietitian. Um, everything that I've learned, I've learned through experience or by doing my own research, but rest assured that I'm not making stuff up and that if I don't know the answer to something, I won't speak on it because I don't like being wrong. Um, so if that sounds good to you, keep watching and you'll see how I created this look using all deck of Scarlet products. Okay, so I already um, started my brows off camera. I say started because I'm going to put a little, I'm going to do a little something else to them later. Um, and then primed my eyes. I'm going to start off with the shade Innocence from the edition number 13 palette. This really pretty kind of matte periwinkle. And I'm going to uh, start carving out um, my cut crease. So let's go into the first question that I see in the group. Um, I want to make a brunch, but it has to be healthy. What do you eat besides egg, sausage, and all that? Brunch as a meal, I feel like you can you can eat anything. I feel like there are traditional breakfast foods, and we feel like we kind of have to stick to them. I mean, it's a myth. You can have anything at any time of the day. I like to have oats. Oats are like my go-to. Another like non, she wanted not eggs and sausage. So I would say oats are a good breakfast food. Uh, any kind of fruit, yogurt. Um, I like to use plain non-fat Greek yogurt. Um, and you can really do just about anything with that. You can mix fruit with it. You can just put a little bit of honey and cinnamon. You can, uh, my husband puts it in his oats. I haven't gotten super into that yet, but you can do that if, you know, if you dig that. Um, super versatile. So that's like, that's for breakfast, like a healthy breakfast. But for brunch, I feel like you could literally have anything because brunch is really cool in that you can have a mixture of breakfasty, traditional breakfasty foods. But then you also have the um, the opportunity to like do traditional lunch or dinner foods. Like you can go to brunch and you can have like eggs and bacon, or you can go to brunch and you can have like chicken marsala, you know, whatever whatever you want. So 
all of your lean proteins are fair game. You can have any of your like seafood, um, turkey, chicken. Um, <laughs> you can have your, your vegetables, your asparagus, your peppers, you know, all of that is fair game. Okay, now that I've kind of carved out where I want my cut crease and just kind of packed on the color and made this this shape so that when I'm looking straight ahead, um, you can still see. You can still see the color. Um, that's what I that's what you want for a cut crease because I think we're kind of used to like blending into the crease and for people, especially like people who have hooded eyes. You won't be able to see that when your eyes are open. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the edition number three palette, and I'm going to use the shade Baby Doll. The next question, I really need help getting rid of my back wings. Any good home exercises I can do to help with making them go away? Okay, I'm going to assume that she's talking about like back fat. Take this with a grain of salt. I think people think that you can target um, fat reduction. And what I say, what I mean when I say that is people are like, oh, I really want to get fat, get rid of fat like on my back. I really want to get rid of fat on my arms, on my thighs. I really want to get rid of stomach fat. <sighs> it, and it's a myth because that's not, that's not how that works. Um, you can't just get rid of fat wherever you want. That's called targeted fat loss and and it's not a it's not a thing. What you can do is you can lower the overall fat percentage of your entire body and then your body will choose where it wants to get rid of the fat. Um and it might not be the spot where where you want it. But what you can do is you can kind of strengthen the muscles underneath that fat. So as your body decides to get rid of fat wherever it wants, um, if the muscles have been strengthened underneath those regions, that's when you'll start seeing the definition and that's when you'll start seeing it get toned. So with that said, <laughs> um, for back, so you can... Some at-home exercises you can do. Um, one of my favorite things is Superman's, which is you lie on the on the ground on your belly with your arms extended in front of you and, and your legs behind you, of course. And you lift your arms um, and your shoulders off the ground. You lift your legs off the ground. And the only part that's touching the ground really is your torso and your hips. And you hold that for as long as you can. Um, for a beginner, just as long as you can. For someone intermediate, I would say holding it for two minutes is a really good exercise. And for more of an advanced athlete, five minutes is probably very good. I'm going to carve out my cut crease using the um, liquid eyeshadow from the mystery box. This is the High Shine liquid eyeshadow in the shade Melted, Melting Rose. And I'm going to use this to carve out my cut crease. So that's good. Another exercise that you can do from home that's really good for the back is pull-ups. Um, you can find a pull-up bar um, for very, very cheap. I, I got mine for like 20 bucks and you can just put it up in your doorway. And I think some people who don't have pull-ups yet are kind of hesitant to make that purchase, you can use resistance bands to kind of help you get through the motion, or you can jump up to the bar and do what's called negatives, which is starting in the pull-up position and then just lowering yourself very, very slowly back down to the ground. That's called negatives, and that's really good for strengthening your back muscles if you don't have pull-ups yet. Inverted rows are another good exercise, and that's kind of when you're lying with your, your belly facing the ceiling and your arms are holding onto something and it can be like, I've seen this done with like two chair backs and then you put a very sturdy like broom or, or shovel or something across the backs of the chairs and you kind of hold onto that and you lower yourself as though you're doing a push up, but you know, upside down. 
Th those are called inverted rows, and those are also really fantastic for strengthening your back muscles. The next question, I need good home workout ideas. I have no equipment to help me get beach ready and must be maintainable. If you're someone who doesn't have a gym membership and doesn't plan on getting one, even after lockdown or quarantine, wherever you are, I think that making an investment into uh, equipment is making an investment into your health. Um, there are a lot of really fantastic body weight exercises that you can do, but there's only so much progress that you're going to see unless you start adding weight to your routine. Um, and I truly believe that. There are a lot of really inexpensive pieces of equipment that you can get for your home gym. Like I'm not saying you have to go out and buy a Peloton or a Bowflex. Um, you know, like a pull-up bar is 20 bucks. You can get some weights for pretty cheap, you know, stuff like that, like a, a bench. There are so many good body weight exercises. There are actually probably too many for me to name. Um, you saw a few of them in this video where I used the body weight exercise cards to make a whole routine out of stuff that I could do just at home. And yeah, some of the, some of those body weight exercises use equipment like, you know, a pull up bar, um, or a step, but some of them don't, a lot of them don't. And you can just, you know, do it on the floor or standing up uh, or with a yoga mat. Um, and if you don't have a mat, then just do it on the floor, you know? Um, so there are plenty of, of body weight exercises you can do. Um, you'll see some of those in my muscles and makeup. There's a bunch of like body weight exercises on my channel. So I just en encourage you to check out some of my other videos and see, um, what body weight exercises you can do, um, with the equipment or lack of equipment that you have. Hello. Hello. Hello, internet. I'm going to go back into the edition number three palette and go into this eyeshadow shade Show Cute. It's a light shimmery pink, like the shimmery version of Baby Doll, which I used up here. And I'm going to use a very small Sephora brush and just put this um, starting on my lid, going over that liquid shade that I put um, and dressing it up with a little bit of color. Next question... I'm needing help with trying to get in shape as I've been a bit of a lump recently, looking to lose a little weight around my stomach and cut down my bloating. Also looking to help losing a little weight on my thighs. Any trips, any tips, tricks, or routines will be very grateful. So that's going back to what I was saying before about how you can't do spotted, like targeted fat reduction. She wants to target her belly and and her thighs and you can't do that she just she's just going to need to lose weight overall cut down her entire body fat percentage and then strengthen those areas um so that the muscles will come through when she's lost that fat now i, I feel inclined to just talk about the core in general and not just um what you can do at home with minimal equipment because I in theory we won't be stuck home forever that would be fantastic if we weren't and one day we'll be able to get back to the gym and we'll have access to all of the equipment I'd say full body exercises are the way to go especially if you have more than one area where you'd like to see um, a little bit more muscle definition and a little bit more muscle strength so when I say full body I think like deadlifts um, think pull-ups, think burpees, think dumbbell thrusters, because all of those things, uh, all of those exercises are going to, you're definitely going to feel it some areas more than the other, but all of those exercises are going to strengthen your core and your legs. And I also, I've become a huge fan of planking in the past couple of years, um, it, you'll engage your shoulders, you'll engage your core, it, you'll engage your mind, like planks make you mentally strong. I, I truly believe that. Uh, as far as her other question about bloating, bloating comes from a lot of different 
things. It could be nutrition. Um, and sometimes bloating is just because your nutrition isn't regular. Um, you might eat healthy on Monday and then you eat nothing but junk food on Tuesday and then you kind of eat moderately on Wednesday and on Thursday you kind of eat nothing and then you binge a lot on Friday and your body's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And um, maybe it'll be bloated in retaliation. So I think the body really wants a regular diet from you, a regularly nutritious diet. I think a lot of people will experience that like they'll try to they'll try to get healthy and they'll try to add a lot more fruits and vegetables to their diet and then they'll, they'll be like, "Oh, I'm bloated. Maybe I'm doing this wrong." No, no, that's a good thing. Um if you're eating more fruits and vegetables than normal, uh, you're going to feel bloated for the first week or so, not going to lie, but it does get better as your body gets used to it. Um that's just a lot of fiber that your body wasn't getting before, and it didn't know. It, it's trying to figure out what to do with it. Uh, so stick with it. <laughs> um, a nutritious diet will definitely help with bloating. Um, drinking water, staying hydrated will definitely help with bloating. Exercising regularly will help with bloating. And then bloating, sometimes it's just lady problems. And if that's something that's like really derailing your progress, that might be something to talk to a doctor about like, hey, I think my bloating is more than like the average woman. Help me and see what your doctor can do for you. The next color I'm going to dip into is from the same palette, the number three palette. And this shade is called Feeling Peachy, which is, of course, a shimmery peach color. And this one is going to go on the outer third of the eye. I'm also going to move on to the next question. So this post says, um, I'm getting depressed seeing your amazing transformations. I'm proud of you. It just seems not to work for me. I'm just gaining weight. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm eating healthier. I'm trying to move a little every day. But when I'm standing on the scale this morning, the disappointment couldn't be bigger. Um, I don't know how to say this in a more polite way. Screw the scale. Get rid of it. If you're on a weight loss journey, um, the scale is going to do more harm than good. Get rid of it. Hide it. Throw it out. Donate it. Break it. Throw it out a window. Flush it down the toilet. It won't fit down the toilet. But <laughs> get rid of it. Um, because that number doesn't matter. When you step on a scale, you're weighing a lot of things. You're weighing your skin and your organs and your bones, and your water. Um, <laughs> you're weighing more things than just fat and muscle. So that number on the scale might not be a, an accurate measurement of, of what progress you're making. So if you're eating healthier, if you're being more active, you don't need the scale to tell you that you're doing a good job. You're, you already know you're doing a good job. So ignore that number. Forget it. I've never been heavier than I am right now, and I'm in the best shape of my life. So that just goes to show you that the scale is stupid. <sighs> don't trust it. Don't use it to measure your progress. The next color that I'm going to go into is from the edition number 11 palette, and it's this shimmery yellow shade called limoncello really pretty um, I'm just gonna apply this one using my finger and I'm going to do it right in the center of each eyelid and then use my finger to blend it into the colors that are already on my lid also gonna move on to another question so this person is saying I've been so active I've been eating healthier but the number on the scale keeps on going up. I really want to lose 13 pounds. Why? What, what a random number. 13 pounds exactly? Why? Who told you what magic number you needed to see on the scale? I wish we had a different dialogue. I, I wish I could just go back to the first time in young girls' lives when they're being told that they should actually listen to the number on the scale and uh, slap whoever told them that. Next question. Okay, so this what this post is kind of long, so I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's also pretty personal, but basically, this person has two chronic disabilities. Um, 
and she missed her workout. And then it says, I started working out to attempt to build muscle and stamina to help these days, but this slap in the face makes me feel defeated. How do y'all deal with days where life forces you to miss a workout? Are there any of you struggling with working out despite medical conditions or disabilities? There's only so much advice I can give because I'm not someone who suffers from any chronic disabilities. You can't beat yourself up if you miss a workout. You know, you can't turn back time and make it make make yourself go go back and do that workout. And then sometimes in cases like hers, she literally couldn't. She couldn't get out of bed. Um, and I think you just need to remind yourself that that's, that's okay. Um, an important part of your health is your mental health. And beating yourself up over missing a workout is definitely not helping your progress. Um, as far as staying active when you have a chronic illness, that's definitely a question for a doctor. You need to talk to your doctor. Um, you need to tell them, you need to keep them updated whenever your workout routine, your level of intensity of workouts is changing so they can kind of help you to do so in a way that's healthy for your specific condition. Um, I wouldn't say that this is exactly a question for strangers on the internet. I think this is a question for your doctor. Another thing that's helpful with not, you know, beating yourself up if you if you miss a, a workout is to have a regular workout schedule. If you are working out regularly, um, you're not going to beat yourself up for missing a day because you know that you're you're working out regularly. So it's not just like, oh, I was only going to work out once this month and I missed that day. So now I'm, I feel really guilty because I'm not going to work out until next month is a different kind of feeling than I was supposed to work out Monday, but I missed Monday, but I'm working out on Wednesday anyway. So um, I think the more regular you are and the more workouts you do regularly, the less guilty you'll feel for missing one or two. It's also really healthy to have rest days built into your routine. So your body needs rest days, but a good upside to rest days is that if you do miss a day or life life happens, you miss a day, um, you don't you maybe the workout's not lost completely. Maybe you can rearrange your rest days to make up that workout on a day that you normally would have been resting. And I try not to do that too often because at least in my schedule, rest days are very strategically placed. But it's definitely something that you can do every once in a while if you're really looking forward to a particular workout um, and, and you missed it for whatever reason. I just want to highlight the brow bone a little bit. And for this, I'm going to use the all over highlighting stick in Frozen Rose. And I usually only highlight like the tail end of my brow bone. And then I'm just kind of stamping my finger along there to blend it. So I did my foundation, concealer, and a little bit of powder under my eyes off camera. Um, now I'm going to go back in and just darken up the outer corners here just a little bit. Um, and I'm going to use the Edition 3, the shade right here called Taj. What do y'all use for meal prep containers? I want something that's going to last and is kind of cute. Also, drop your favorite pasta meals, please. What do you pack alongside it? Favorite healthy snacks. I got my meal prep containers off of Amazon. There were like 30 of them. Um, and then I got two kinds. I got the like portion kind where there's um, like a big section and then two small sections. And then I got like the, the round kind that's for like pasta dishes and salads. They're not cute, but they are cheap. If you want something cute, you're going to pay more. I don't know what to tell you. Um, what you can do is paint them. <laughs> if you're feeling particularly crafty, you can buy meal prep containers from Amazon and just paint them, make it classy. I don't think pasta has your reputation for being like a very healthy 
kind of food. Like, it's good in moderation, and if you um, have it, like, I think when my, my family used to only have pasta once a week, and uh, I feel like that's good. Uh, and it's important to also make sure you get your vegetables in there. So either like mix in your, your peppers and your tomatoes and your mushrooms in with your pasta, um, or have a salad on the side, but you should definitely be getting a vegetable serving, um, a full vegetable serving in with your pasta dishes. And if that means that you have to have less pasta to leave room in your stomach for more vegetables, good. Um, because realistically you don't need to be eating that much pasta anyway. And then favorite healthy snacks, like I've gotten so, so lazy with my cooking recently. Um, real quick, I'm just going to tight line my upper lash line with this pencil, uh, Twilight. It's like a dark purple shade. Um, I've gotten so lazy with my, um, with cooking in general. So as far as snacks go, I'm just like, if it's not easy, if it's not quick, then I'm not eating it. So I feel like fruit is just such a fantastic snack always. You don't need to do anything with it, except for like maybe cut it up. Apples? Apples are, are great. All you have to do is wash it, and then you can just bite right into it and eat it. Love apples, pears, I'm really into peaches, plums. Um, I like oranges, but hear me out, I'm too lazy to even cut them. I literally cannot be bothered. Um, however, I'll cut I'll cut them into quarters instead of peeling them. And then just like eat them out of the quarters. So fruit is like a go-to healthy snack for me, peanut butter or almond butter. And maybe I'll have that with like some celery or, or some carrots or something. Um, I've gotten into like cucumbers as a healthy snack and like maybe putting something on it like, like hummus or, or tuna. Um, and like using cucumbers as a cracker. Chef's kiss, man. That's good stuff. Your healthy snacks aren't necessarily, aren't always about what you're eating, but also how much you're eating. If you're hungry enough to devour a whole bag of chips with your guacamole, then you probably didn't need a snack. You probably needed a meal. Um, <laughs> or... You know, maybe you need to portion your snacks out ahead of time. And instead of just, you know, leaving the bag of chips open and letting it be a bottomless pit of I'll eat it until I feel like not eating anymore, you just say you portion out how much you're going to have in advance. Um, fruits and veggies are all, are a go-to for snacks for me, though. Um, healthy fats in moderation, like your avocado, peanut butter, almond butter, that kind of stuff. Um, if you're having the right amount, that can be a healthy snack, too. Now I'm just going to use this Go Glitter Liquid Eyeliner in the shade Sparkler. And I'm going to kind of trace along this cut crease. And I'm going to move on to the next question, which is, I'm trying to make my diet healthier. I need meals I can make in bulk on a Monday that will last me until Friday but I'm falling short on healthy meals that'll last me that long. Any ideas? Welcome. And I read that part and I was like so full of ideas. And then she said, note, I am a vegan. Okay. Well, I'm not. <laughs> so um, if you are making the decision to go vegetarian or to go vegan, you need to be prepared that it's going to be tough. In order to do it correctly and make sure that your body is still getting everything that it needs and not too much of what it doesn't need, um, you really need to be on top of your diet. You need to really do your research. Once you're vegan, you need to rely on plant-based 
energy, plant-based protein sources. And that's not always easy because a lot of plant-based high protein foods are also high carbs. And depending on what you're doing, um, exercise wise, you might not, you might be consuming more carbs than your body knows what to do with. And that's a, a big problem for people who, who might go vegan is just figuring that out. And I'm not saying that it's impossible. I'm just saying that it's difficult and you need to know that um, going in that you, you need to be committed to it. And if you're trying to lead a healthy lifestyle and also be vegan, it's going to take some work. It's going to take some planning. I don't know if this has ever happened to any of you, but do you ever like feel like you're cooking in bulk? Like, oh, I'm, I'm cooking this food and it's going to last me like all week. And then you actually like throughout the week, you go in and, and portion yourself out like how much you're going to have for that meal. And you realize this food that was supposed to last you all week long only lasted you until Tuesday at lunch. <laughs> so if you are trying to make meals for the whole week, like actually measure it out, measure your ingredients, make sure that you are putting in enough for the whole week and then stick to the serving sizes that you had dictated for yourself. Um, another thing about meal prep in bulk is I don't like to do specific meals in advance. Um, I like to do portions of meals and then kind of package them individually. And yeah, it takes up more containers, but it allows you a little bit of freedom throughout the week. Because what happens if, if you make all of your meals for Monday through Friday, and then Wednesday comes along and you're like, around lunchtime, you're like, mm, the food that I had set aside for Wednesday lunch, I'm not really feeling it today. Um, and then you're just like miserable eating your food. And that's silly. So what I would say is to like make a little protein container, make a little vegetable container, make a little starch container, like make a little fat container. And then and then just like grab the segments of meals that you want, like grab your fruit, grab your protein, grab your your side um, and you're in they're in your three separate containers. And now that's your meal um, instead of like saying my specific meal is going to be chicken and broccoli and rice. Maybe you have the chicken here and you have the broccoli here and you have your rice here so that maybe one day if you're not feeling chicken, um, you can have your broccoli and your rice, but maybe you're not feeling chicken that day and you'll grab your turkey meatloaf instead. And, you know, your your happiness is not sabotaged just because you planned your meals in advance. Okay, so the next question is, any of you girls know what is the best way to teach yourself how to do splits? Any tips would be appreciated. It's something that you have to work on. And over time, um, you can just work on your flexibility. It is a flexibility thing. It's a little technique, but also flexibility. And that's something that you can develop uh, with time. There are actually apps that you can download, and I think they might even be free, that'll like show you, that'll help you, you know, get to your first split in 30 days or something like that. When I was younger, I used to be very close to doing a split because I, I practiced each day. And nowadays I just, I have other priorities, but you know, who knows? Next question, really struggling to motivate myself the past couple of days, any advice? Okay, motivation is tough. And I feel like this is a resounding question that I see in every group. Um, on Facebook. I'm going to work on my bottom lash line a little bit. I'm going to start with my waterline and I'm using this uh, pencil in Desert Rose. 
so you have to kind of figure out what works for you. Um, positive reinforcement works for some people. Negative reinforcement works for some people. And basically what the difference is, is positive reinforcement is when you reward yourself for doing um, the desired behavior. Hello, cat. You reward yourself for doing the desired behavior. Um, and then negative reinforcement is you punish yourself for, for not doing the desired behavior or for doing the undesired behavior. You know, if, if I, positive reinforcement will be like, if I work out, um, consistently for however many days, then I get to like, I don't know, buy myself a new pair of leggings or something like that, you know? Or, like, buy myself a new pair of, of running shoes or something. And then negative reinforcement is more like a punish punishment-based system. Um, so, you know, figuring out which one works for you, that could be a thing. Um, some people have motivation boards, and that works for them. Which a motivation board is you kind of, you create kind of like a collage of the things that motivate you and it might just have like words or phrases that'll pick you up and kind of remind you why you're doing what you're doing, why you want to eat healthy, why you want to exercise, why you want to train, kind of the goal that you're working toward, whether it be, you know, a race or a competition, whether it be just to, to be healthier, to live longer, to be a good example for your kids, you know, whatever it may be. You might want to put that on the motivation board so that every time you're kind of lacking in your motivation, you can remind yourself of why it benefits you to be healthy, um, why you should be motivated to work out. Me personally, I have found that I need a, a end goal. I need a goal and working toward a goal is what motivates me. Like, I have to remind myself of what I'm working toward, and that's what motivates me personally. But it's definitely a journey to find out what's going to motivate you, and you're going to need to figure that out for yourself and then use that. So if you're like me, maybe find a race or a competition or an event, something that you can work toward, and maybe see if that works for you, knowing that you have a goal and a deadline. Like, I need to be at this point by this date, and this is also my performance-based goal for this. You also don't need to have a race or a competition. You can set performance-based goals for yourself in your training. Like, I want to get to 200 pounds on my deadlift, or, or, like a, or I want to be able to do five consecutive pull-ups, ten consecutive pull-ups, something like that. Like, that's a performance-based goal, and you know that if you slack off at the gym or you're not giving yourself the nutrition, the fuel that you need, you're not going to reach those goals. So I think that setting goals for yourself are the best motivation Reminding yourself of why you need to be healthy is good motivation. And at the end of the day, if negative or positive reinforcement helps you, then go for it. I'm going to go back in with my double-sided deck of Scarlet Brush. And I'm go going to go into this shade Sagittarius from the edition number four palette, which is kind of like a deep burgundy. And I'm going to go really tight to my bottom lash line with this color. Um, and then I'm going to blend it out with this blush shade Candy Bloom from the edition number 13 palette. The next question is, what are some of your time-saving food hacks? Rice cookers are bomb, and I promise you it has cut off so much prep time off of things like, like sweet potatoes, steel-cut oats, um, beets like things that would normally take a little bit of time to cook um become a little less time consuming in a rice cooker with the steaming attachment it's actually incredible another time saving food hack is just to cook in bulk buying your fruits and vegetables pre-cut is a huge time saver and you kind of have to decide if it's worth the cost for you because pre-cut fruits and vegetables are a little bit more expensive 
than like if you were to buy fresh produce and cut it yourself. But for some people, the time that you save is worth it. Um, me personally, if I could just never cut onions again for the rest of my life, that'd be fantastic. But I see how much like pre chopped onions are and I'm like, mm. Mm. so, uh, but for other people, it might be worth it. Now I'm just going to put a little of this diamond dust shade um, in my inner corners for a highlight. This is from the Edition 4 palette. This is maybe one of the prettiest deck of scarlet eyeshadows I've ever seen in my life. Um, the next question is, I have an incredible time seeing anything other than acne on my face. I'm in need of some support and would be grateful if any of you ladies would share your experience with me. Girl, same. But the better care I take of my skin, the the better my acne is. Um, doing things that you might not normally do, like overnight moisturizing and exfoliating and stuff. I only do those things to make my makeup look better. But it's actually been better for my skin. But if your acne is like super, super, really, really bad and it's not something that gets better or worse, um, depending on, you know, what, what you're eating and your skincare routine, that might be worth going and seeing a dermatologist and seeing what he or she thinks, um, because it could be something else. It could be a hormonal imbalance and you don't need to just, you know, be miserable with your skin. Um, it's something that you might be able to get help with. Next, I'm going in with palette number 11. This is the shade Moonstone. It's technically a blush, um, but there aren't any bronzers in any of these palettes. And it's a little orangey, which makes it a very beautiful blush, but not necessarily a great bronzer. But I think I might be able to pull it off anyway because I have a warm skin tone. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. What did you do today to bring you one step closer to your goal? I did exercise today, and I'll be honest, I didn't really want to. I really had to push myself to work out today, um, but I'm glad I did. I'm very, very sore. Um, it, was a, it was a pretty rigorous workout for me. I'm just going to go back with this Frozen Rose All Over Highlighting Stick. And I'm just going to take this right down the center of my nose and then um, on my cupid's bow a little. I'm actually going to use a lip product on my eyebrows just because I have three glosses to use. This is the High Shine Lip Gloss in the shade Splash. It's translucent with sparkles. I think it's going to be really cute. So what I'm using is just a an eyebrow spoolie and um, picking up the product off of the applicator of the lip gloss and I'm just going to run this through my eyebrows kind of like an eyebrow gel. Maybe it'll give them a little gleam. Um, while I'm doing this I'm going to answer the next question and I kind of peeked ahead and honestly just reading the question got me mad. Calories left at the end of the day. Is it best to eat something not so good to make them up or go without? <laughs> Counting calories? It's stupid. Sorry, not sorry. Counting calories is stupid. Um, and here's why. Not all calories are created equal. A hundred calories of potato chips do not do the same thing for your body as 100 calories of broccoli. They absolutely don't. But at the end of the day, there's still 100 calories. So you can be counting calories and you can be getting, you know, 2,000 calories a day or 1,800 calories a day or 1,500 calories a day or, you know, whatever amount of calories, whatever just completely arbitrary number of calories that you've decided that you're going to get in order to lose weight or maintain weight or whatever you want to do. Um, and you can reach that number at the end of the day and have not consumed a single healthy thing for the day, a single 
healthy source of fuel for your body. And that's why counting calories is so stupid. You can be in a calorie deficit at the end of the day and still not lose any weight. And which what a calorie deficit means is that you have um you've burned more calories that you've consumed. Um <laughs> And still not put a single healthy thing into your body. You can eat nothing but brownies and and uh, chips and uh, cookies for the whole day. Not a single fruit, not a single vegetable, not a single lean protein source, not a single healthy fat. And, you know, maybe that day you you went for a run or something and maybe maybe you burned off more more calories you know according to your little stupid calorie counting app you burned off more calories than you consumed oh why am i not losing weight because maybe you're eating crap and you think that it's okay just because you're working out and and theoretically burning all these calories, but you're doing damage to your metabolism and it's stupid. So to answer that girl's question, no, don't eat crap at the end of the day just because you didn't have as many calories as your little calorie counting app said that you could. If you're not hungry, don't eat anything else. I'm I'm going to flip all the tables. I don't know. I'm sorry. If the girl, the girl who posted that, I'm sorry if you're watching, but I'm just mad at you. Um, next, I'm using this glow up jelly in the shade extra. Um, it's a really cool, interesting, liquidy consistency. Um, you can use it applying your finger, but I'm just going to use a regular highlighting brush. It's really, really pretty on the skin. It's almost like holographic. So I'm just going to use this to highlight around the face. Uh, the next question is, do you have tips to relieve the, sh the tightness um, in your shoulders? And remember to relax your shoulders throughout the day. Good posture is a great thing to have. And it's kind of something that you'll need to like remind yourself of while you're developing good posture. You'll just have to remind yourself to push your shoulders back, to relax your shoulders. Uh, lately, I've been appreciating... Um, the power of a bath. Now my hand looks like I've been petting a unicorn for seven years. I feel like baths are relaxing. Like I'm not, I'm very much not a, a daily bath kind of gal, but I've been trying to like take a bath every week, once a week. And then, you know, just, you know, temporarily it's really relaxing, just the hot water. And if you can take a bath with like Epsom salt, is really nice so that's something that will relax your shoulders um, another thing is like if you can get a massage get a membership at a, a sports uh, massage therapist and that that's probably really helpful too. Um, put a heating pad on your shoulder on your shoulders that can release some tension. I know they have like the reusable heating pads where you like click the little metal disc inside and then it gets all like warm and hard and then you have to boil it to reset it. But like those are pretty cool. Or you know a traditional heating pad will probably also work just fine. For blush I'm gonna use the shade Adorable from palette number four. Looking to learn about nutrition, does anyone have any book suggestions on nutrition, particularly sports nutrition? Realistically, the most things that I've learned uh, from nutrition about nutrition has been from the Thick Thighs Save Lives podcast. Um, it is actually the only podcast I listen to. I'm not really a podcast kind of person, but I don't know, something about this one really appeals to me and I feel like they have a lot of nutrition topics that are supremely helpful. I'm going to go back into the edition number 13 and just use the highlight shade Firefly. They have a lot of good nutrition advice. It's not just nutrition. They have a lot of exercise advice too. And while it is for women, 
um, designed for women, there is a lot of information in those podcasts, nutrition wise and exercise wise, mental and physical health wise, that would probably just be helpful for anyone. Um, so I definitely, if you're into podcasts or even if you're not into podcasts, because I know that I sure wasn't, um, if you're looking for some nutrition information and really can't commit to taking a full course or reading a whole book on it, just listen to a few of their podcasts and you will really learn a lot. Um, they educate themselves before they talk, so it's a good resource. I just hopped off camera real quick to apply some false lashes. Deck of Scarlet Vegan False Lashes in Drama. Really easy to work with. That's why I, I tried them out today. Um, they didn't come in the mystery box. They came in my regular Deck of Scarlet subscription. Uh, and then I'm going to use this Deck of Scarlet mascara. This is the Sexy AF Mascara in Blackout. It's a really good mascara. I'm just going to use this on my bottom lashes. Is anyone else struggling with finding their motivation to exercise during this lockdown? Um, mine has gone and I'm struggling so bad. Any tips? A lot of the things that people might have been training for or preparing for have either been canceled or postponed. Their lives are turned upside down. They don't have the equipment that they used to have access to. Um, some of their normal motivators aren't there. And it's just a very unique circumstance that we find ourselves in. I'm going to use the lip liner from the Mystery Box. This is long-lasting lip liner in the shade Foxy. It's just a nude lip liner. I'm going to use it to line and then fill in my lips. I've found that the best way to keep your motivation is that even when your circumstances change, to not let your schedule change. I've been trying to still wake up at the same time, or at least close. I've been trying to still go to bed at the same time, try to keep the same bedtime. And then I'm just going to use this um, High Shine Lip Gloss in Champagne Dreams, and I'm just going to use it in the very center. But yeah, I'm just trying to keep my schedule as similar as possible. Waking up when I normally would, going to bed when I normally would, trying to eat as often as I would. And that way, like I wake up early and I go to the gym. And so even on lockdown, I might not be leaving to go to the gym, but like this is my, I wake up and that's my gym time. So if I'm not working out, whether I'm motivated or not, I'll work out anyway, because that is the time I have allotted. I'm already in a ritual. I'm already in a routine. So I think that's really good advice is to just keep yourself, keep your schedule as, as similar as possible. Um, even when your circumstances change, like same thing on vacation, you might want to sleep in and yeah, completely called for. But like if your routine is to wake up and immediately work out, still do that on vacation if you want to work out on vacation. Um, and my, while you might be waking, going, going to bed later and waking up later, you, if your routine is wake up, go to the gym, then still do that. This is the High Shine Lip Gloss in the shade Dare Me. It's um, coppery, a little like not as translucent. And I'm just using this on the outer corners. All right, guys, this is the finished look. I'm pretty excited with how it turned out. I think it looks really pretty. Um, you really can't tell because of the camera quality and the lighting. But if I have some higher quality pictures taken from my phone, I'll put them on the screen now so you can get a closer look at uh, exactly what I did on my eyes and everything. I think it looks really pretty. Um, I hope that this was helpful or at least entertaining for any of you who have had fitness questions. Feel free to leave your fitness questions in the comments below or um, you can always tag me on Twitter with your fitness questions or message me on Twitter and I'd be happy to answer uh, either fitness questions or questions about me and my, fit, my personal fitness journey. I'd be happy to answer them in a future video. Um, right now I kind of just 
answered questions that the people were talking about in in my group lately. Remember that there is still a giveaway live. The winner will be able to get four Deck of Scarlet products from my mystery box. And just for clarity, they are not the products that I used. These are my personal palettes. These are my personal makeup items. The winner will be getting brand new, never used, never swatched makeup items from my mystery box and the winner will get to choose one of the four palettes that I used today, one of the three liners that I used, one of the three glosses that I used, and one of the three like shimmer items that I used. So you'll get one from each category um, for four products total. It's a really high value giveaway. Um, so please be sure to check that out in the description box below, but you can always check out what this month's challenge is. I have a link to sign up in the description box and remember that my challenges are always absolutely free and no commitment. Please make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't like it, I'm sorry. Well, you made it this far, so thanks. But if you did like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. You can feel free to tell me what you did or didn't like in the comments below. Just be nice. Um, and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. This is a bonus video for the month, but I usually post new videos on the first Wednesday of every month and then um, a battle of the boxes on the penultimate day of the month. And then every once in a while, I'll have a bonus video like today if I felt like I wanted to expand on something in a video but thought it would be too time consuming like this whole daggone tutorial. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.